Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Spider-Man can do whatever a spider can. Can he swing to the expo? No, he can't because he's an exclusive. Watch out! It's the PS4 Spider-Man. Ha ha! Zing! This is Hyperactive, and today we're going to be talking about a game that I'm actually really hyped for, and that actually has controversy around it. If you read the title of the video, then you already know what game I'm talking about. Before we get into seeing if the exclusive Spider-Man game is justified, let's talk about some of the other controversy exclusive games first. Let's start with the one that started it all, Bayonetta 2. The first Bayonetta game was a multi-platform with the game gaining tons of success and critical praise. Bayonetta 2 was inevitable, but that was the case until the mascot killing company known as SEGA had financial problems and the game was cancelled. Jump to 2013 where Bayonetta 2 was announced, the long-awaited sequel was finally being made. However, the ball kicking news was that the game was exclusive to the Virtual Boy 2.0, aka the Wii U. This made fans so mad that it threw them into a tantrum. However, Nintendo had a solution for this with one sentence. Bayonetta 2 wouldn't exist without Nintendo's money. This did help with most of the fans' anger, but not all of them. Fans stayed skeptical about the game until the game was released. Bayonetta 2 came out to be an awesome game that taught men more about the women's body than actual sex ed class. Arguably, Bayonetta 2 was the Wii U's best exclusive and most fans were happy and accepted the fact that it was an exclusive title. But then the same controversy happened again, but this time it was the Tomb Raider franchise. The Tomb Raider reboot was another multi-platform that was critically a successful game, but did not meet financial expectations. It sold roughly around 3.4 million copies within 21 days, compared to the exclusive game called Uncharted 3, sold roughly around 4 million copies in one day. What was Square Enix's solution to get more copies sold? Make it a time exclusive to the X-Bone. Wait, what? Yeah, not the smartest move on Square Enix's side. More on that later. And what was Microsoft's answer for this? They didn't. They just needed a solution to PlayStation's Uncharted franchise and to make their game lineup look more impressive. This of course didn't sit well with the fans and they got out their pitchforks and torches and getting ready to burn down Microsoft. Then we realized that we were too lazy to do that, so we just complained on the internet. However, what mattered most was that if the game sold more on the x alone, and did it? Nope. It took three months to sell a million copies. Let me remind you that it took Tomb Raider on all consoles to sell 3.4 million copies in 21 days. So it's safe to say that this was a bad move on Square Enix side. However, I heard the game came out great, so it might sell more once it released on all consoles. That's even the fans still give a damn about the game still. Finally, let's talk about the last controversial exclusive sequel game, Street Fighter V. Now this game was kind of like Bayonetta 2, but not exactly. You see... Capcom could have made Street Fighter V, but they didn't because they claimed they didn't have enough money to do so. They could have just waited until the next game made, mon made the money, but instead, Sony went up to them and said, Hey, we'll give you money, if money to make Street Fighter V, but it has to be exclusive to the PS4 only. Capcom went, okay, but the game also has to be on the PC as well. Sony went, deal! Wait, what? Yeah, that was very confusing. Street Fighter V wasn't really an exclusive it was also, if it was also on the PC as well. However, did this make the game better since it was only focused on two platforms? Well, think of it this way. You go to a store for this cake that you order. You pick up the cake and you notice half the cake is missing and the icing is barely there. You're asking what's going on and they said, 
it's not done yet, and the rest of it will be done by the end of the year. By that time, you won't give a damn and moved on. And that was Street Fighter V in a nutshell. And did it sell well? Nope. It only sold 1 million copies, and that's combining both platforms. Fans are still mad and are not happy. So safe to say also, this was not the best move from Capcom. Alright, now let's talk about the PS4 Spider-Man game and see if it's justified. Well, let's take a look at the facts. Was Spider-Man always a multi-platform game? Yes. Would a new Spider-Man game still exist without Sony's money? Yes. So with those two as facts, why aren't more fans mad about this? Well, what do Rise of Tomb Raider, Bayonetta 2, and Street Fighter V have all in common? They are all sequels to a game. They're all continuations of a story. This PS4 Spider-Man game is not. It's not a sequel to Ultimate Spider-Man. It's not a sequel to Web of Shadows. It's not a sequel to Edge of Time. And it's not a sequel to, to The Amazing Spider-Man 2. It's its own game, its own story, its own universe, and it's not connected to anything before it. I think that's why fans aren't so mad about this, because it's not a continuation. It's pretty much a big giant reboot if you think about it. I honestly think that's why this game's more justified than all the others. However, does that make it right? Does it make it right for Sony to take a character that's always been a multi-platform game and make him exclusive to the PS4? I'm gonna leave that up to you guys to discuss down below. But keep in mind, this is all just business and Marvel's perfectly aware of this and they are fully supporting Sony Insomniac games. Alright, that's all my thoughts for this video. If you like hearing my thoughts and ideas, why not subscribe and hit the like button as well. See ya!